it's episode 13. Unlucky for some, we're back here. It's uh, episode 13, we made it. We've basically been uh, two on, two off recently here. Little but hiatus, uh, we have. Hiatus. It has been, but uh, at the same time, as the UFC fans at the moment are starving for UFC 205 after a break, the knockoff fans seem to be as well. I've been <laughs> I like what you did there. In, inundated with the odd question of, uh, Oi, where the fuck's the episode? Is you still doing the podcast? So Yeah, we're basically taking a hiatus like, to prep everyone for the equivalent of 205. Yeah, here it is. It's just <laughs> me and Danny here throwing down this afternoon too. It's a little one-on-one session. Chris is away working but uh, sends his love. and We're holding it down, fam. It is... Uh, it's been somewhat of a – we come at you, the Savo, with a bit of a sombre mood as well, don't we, Danny? It's been somewhat of a tragic week in terms of news in South southeast Queensland. Yeah, it's been some gnarly shit happening in Brisbane for sure. We had a theme park tragedy slash disaster where people were thrown from – a ride that has like, a, is it a water ride? It is, yeah. It's like a, a sit-in. You're not, you don't, not like a water slide. Mm. You're not supposed to get wet that much, but um, somebody somehow been thrown from it. Two of the people were um, were caught up in machinery. It just sounds like something out of a, a fucking horror movie type of way to die, you know. So it was, and uh, t- two other people were in the were in the watercraft. Uh, best way to explain it is, it's a, a big circle raft with uh, six people in it. And it just slides along a conveyor belt un- underneath. Have and you been uh, on it before? I have, yeah, I have. Um, we come out of uh, southeast Queensland, and so many people in the, in this region have been to those parks and those exa- on those exact rides. And I think that's why it hits home so much. There was six people in this watercraft. One of them's become jammed on the conveyor belt in front of them. Uh, although the people in the watercraft behind them have essentially just come along and ran up the arse of the of the boat in front. And it's caused them to flip over and right. six people were thrown out of it. For some miraculous reason, the angle where it was thrown, two children were thrown off but survived. And uh, f- four people uh, unfortunately perished in the in the accident. When the oh. a- ambulance came to the scene, there was um, no attempt at revival apparently because they were deemed incompatible with life is what the ambulance officer said. Right. So just right. an, an absolute tragedy. It really hits home because, as, as I said, so many people from this region have been and... You know, it's Dreamworld, it's a fun park, it's the last place you th- yeah. think you're going to go where you no. lose your life, but uh, yeah, I, just I don't terrible. Know. I'm, not a big, uh, I'm not a big theme park person myself. Nor I, man. I've, I've, all, ne- I've never really understood it. Eh? This just completely, you know, solidifies mm. my, my stance on yeah. not going. I mean, I've, uh, I've been sort of uh, made a decision safety-wise not to go to theme parks and stuff when I've been overseas, particularly mm. in Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia. Yep. Um, but don't, you don't think this sort of thing is going to happen in Australia, but it's like, you know, these shitty old machines that are capable of fucking breaking down, like the Tower of Terror and all of those sort of world-class rides. Like, mm. you know, obviously they're feats of engineering and they're totally proven to be safe to, a, to a, mm. you know, an approved status, but Look, it's, it's still just fucking stuff that can go wrong. That's you know? right, man. It, it's um, People built it. There's room for human error and things like that, and there has been some allegations thrown at Dreamworld with negligence and things like that. So we just look from here to see the due process take its course and so they can finally get the coroner's inquest into it and see exactly what happened and identify that and, and improve on it for one yeah. as well. Yeah. Right. And uh, and some other uh, report came out during the week about somebody was doused, a bus driver, 29-year-old bu- bus driver in Brisbane was doused with um, flammable liquid and satellite, uh, basically a petrol bomb mm. and... Um, yeah, and ha- caused an explosion on the bus. Eleven people injured, and the and the driver died as well. Yeah, so. So just and uh, the guys up has fronted court today on a uh, a murder charge. Eleven attempted murder charges on there for the passenger. Yeah, and um, yeah. Uh, s- some other stuff as well. Arson as well. So yeah, just um just a, hor- a horrible accident. You don't know what goes some- through sure. someone's head, but. I think like, um, you know, we're sort of, uh, to a certain extent, we're just fed what we're sort of told through the media. So Mm. it becomes a topical issue because there's two significant media stories that they're sort of pushing for the week. Whereas we discussed it before when... um, when Brad was telling us the story about the the stabbing that he witnessed and, and, you know, no sort of uh, media reports to follow that up, Mm. but just how much 
crime and how much crazy shit goes on every single fucking day that you don't even realise. And I, I, I remember watching that uh, Gold Coast Cop show and that that was definitely an eye-opener, even <laughs> though it's sort of done in a, in a cheesy sort of Channel mm. 10, um, you know, production-type way, but... It's Fuck still man. true crime. There's some heavy mm. motherfuckers rolling down the Gold Coast 24-7, man. You you could walk into the wrong convenience store at the wrong time of day and run into somebody who is a legitimate sociopathic serial killer, mm. psychopath, drug dealer. That's like, right. To, to a crazy level where somebody that you, you're just living your life like trying to, trying to figure out how to get by and, and do right by other people. And there's people out there that are... Uh, essentially monsters in society, you know, like <clears throat> there's a lot of people in prisons that, you know, still have have a moral code and stuff like that. But I've I've spoken to people before when they've described certain, you know, characters that you hear about that have been done for murder or whatever like that. And there's there's a state that human beings can get to where they are like legitimate psychotic killers. Mm. Just lost. It's a scary fucking Absolutely thing. Lost. It's oh, a what? scary thing. Uh have you seen the documentary on Netflix, uh, 13? No. Oh, it's only, only out recently. It's a 2016 documentary uh, on... covers the ground from early African-American slavery into African-American people transitioning into prison systems. Oh, okay, like, yeah, tw- yeah. 25% of the world's people that are incarcerated are in the US. Yeah. So a quarter yeah. of them are in the States. Out of yeah. the entire world, of all the prisons, a quarter of them are American. And uh, it's just a crazy concept over there with that. But just uh, on the slavery side of things, like I've I've read read a lot of stuff, like read into sort of like the Martin Luther King and things like that. But and and seen seen movies based on slavery and things like that. But to actually witness it firsthand in this file footage that they show you, man, it hits home and it hits home hard. It's a real eye opener. Yeah. The other thing that's um, you know, there's so many fucking crazy periods of history eh? and uh, another sort of 19th century phenomena that um that i've been sort of i guess i'm reading i'm reading the book by um ken casey one flew over the cuckoo's nest it's actually like a 1970s movie mm. with jack nicholson I've heard i think of it. as well um but fa- famous story about a a person like undergoing some of the drug testing and and psychotherapy psychoanalysis and shit like that that um occurred sort of through the mid 19th century like 1950s 60s 70s when they were lobotomizing people and oh. and like doing LSD experiments and all that sort of shit mm. and um the, reading that stuff it's actually you know like uh it's because of the social condition and because of the way that society is that we have we have mental health problems and shit like that and 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 and, yeah. and so that whole psychotherapy realm was like oh how do we treat it like it's a machine and how do we like take this component mm. out of the brain and lobotomize people you don't fix it without mm. going to the root cause and the root cause is that we're like struggling to get by in the society where we're so identified with our ego and work and and all of this sort of stuff but um that's yeah. such a good point, man, too. Like, the uh, be interesting to go back if there was some way to analyse uh, mental health back in tribal form. Like, but mm. e- would each uh, each local tribe have I people think, like, um, would they? Would that be what they'd call like a delinquent in that tribe sort of yeah, thing? Like the person yeah. that, was, that seemed a little bit screw loose? Like, so there's a lot of like sociological studies on suicide and stuff like that. And I think I'm totally like, not totally speculating, sort of educated guess, but I'm pretty sure... There's like proven historical evidence of suicide throughout many different societies and levels of right? um, civilization, right. but um, probably for different reasons. And I think the modern condition, like the the anxiety and the depression and the mental health issues that we see, is largely due to the overpopulation and the way mm-hmm. that we live in in such a such a mass population that it actually causes isolation because we're living in these like you know, too too large a packs to be able to have a sense of community. It's like going to the mm-hmm. coast versus um, walking around the CBD. You know, you, you you say hello to people when you walk past them. If you say hello to everybody you walk past in the CBD, you you're like considered a lunatic. You know what I mean? Mm. You, you consider oh, you're not you're not acting right. You're not. Yeah, that's what, a, that's a good point too. So, so in order to abide by society's sort of norms, you're forced into this. Um, you're forced into this area where you're constantly, you know, doing an unnatural thing. Like you're going 
going against your biology, which is to have a sense of community and have a sense of connectedness. But we're, you know, sitting sitting in pods all day long at work and then sitting on the train, not talking to anybody, and we're isolated. And we're in, in our own heads and on our on our devices, flicking through. Oh, this is actually real life. This is pictures of people currently li- yeah. living real life. I can't wait till I live yeah. my real life. <laughs> That's like, what I mean. I'm so I'm just thinking. And then all head. of a sudden, you're fucking you you like doctor. I'm going fucking crazy. Yeah. Like I can't get my fucking head straight at all. People are fucking and tripping he, on me. And then he says, "Well, we'll come on in. We'll give you, you know, Seroquel, and we'll yeah. give you these things to to numb your thinking and to and to to tune you out until yeah. all of a sudden you're a vegetable. And then it's like, what's next? Electroshock therapy or yeah. or whatever. It's sort of um, such a down. such a interesting sort of um, thing to think about, and and such a refreshing one too to be able to see. Oh, okay, you know, all of this." stuff that we worry about all of our like you know job and am i going to be all right am i going to die is my family going to be all right Are people going to get sick all of this like mm. worrying and everything like that it's really just you know it's all just a happening like and and you know the buddhist sort of attitude towards towards life and death is like you know people are essentially apples falling off the tree we're ripe for a while and then we start to you know Dwindles. ripen more and then we fall off the tree and we rot and we go back into the earth sort of thing Wild, man. And not to look at it with such a sort of anxious viewpoint that we have. And, and I think if you can kind of step back from all of that chaos and all of that isolation and sort of just have have a moment where you just see everything for this little play of, of you know, organisms and play of cells that's just constantly going on and you can go, oh, okay, like mm. th- everything's okay. I'm just I'm connected with everything. And I think that's what... That's what meditation is ultimately when you can find that tiny little space and go, oh, yep, I feel feel one with everything. We're all together. We're all like, you know, it's all just a happening. I can't say I've ever been to a state of that much clarity in meditation. Not that I've been any sort of pro in in doing it, but there's been the odd time where I've I've given it a go and it seems like something that you really need to persist with. And Totally. And I feel like I've maybe, um, I probably try to meditate, you know, maybe... I'd maybe get at minimum 30 minutes done a week or something like that, like five minutes here and there, just sort of whether it's even just conscious breathing or, you know, a lot of the time though when you sort of sit down to to meditate, you you don't ever get one of those moments where you sort of feel that like oh tuning in oh, i wasn't actually thinking of anything just then i was completely sort of mm. like having what you what you would consider a zen moment i guess um there's been maybe once once or twice or three times something that i've felt a little bit of that like yep. um through chanting mostly like if you if you get into a good chant where the the rhythm the rhythm of your breathing is um is like not a not not a difficult thing that you're forcing it's just coming naturally mm. and you're sort of like getting Oming, that, things like that you know you sort of get this resonance because you're making noise and it's vibrating in your head and it's just like oh whoa well, i just didn't think of anything just yeah then, we've got a uh we've got a singing bowl a himalayan singing mm. bowl at home uh, Sa- quite, quite a large one too yeah. and we do the odd bit of chanting but it's um sound is like uh you know the perfect anchor for for meditation is what they reckon you know the sound of the gong mm. because it's a it's like gong and then the reverberation it continues so it's a constant state of now so it's yeah. keeping you in that like present state as opposed to a an anxious state in the future mm. or in the past you oh, are yeah. so, so heavy man yeah. isn't it out, out of if just you think about simple it, if you think equipment. about like anxiety or anything, it, it's only ever to do with something in the future or the past. It's never really a present thing, is it? Like it's always, you know, I'm worried about did I do this performance well or like mm. is this going to be all right? You yeah, sort of it's, ne- it's not a present uh, mental health issue at all, is it? That's a really good point, man, too. Yeah. It's not It's not like, shit, I'm worried about what, what's happening right now. It's, oh fuck is this coming up or oh did i fucking did i fuck up last <laughs> night look look at hangovers for example like if any person who's a seasoned drinker has never woken up with a knot in their stomach they've never been drunk before yeah like that's yeah. just common knowledge even if you don't suffer from any form of normal anxiety uh day to day there's times where people get hung over and it's like oh shit that rocked my body yeah because legitimately not legitimately not knowing what you did eight hours ago is uh why wouldn't you fucking be anxious about it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. But um, ultimately, that a- 
anxious, you know, feeling will will solve absolutely nothing. Like no, whatever no. you did last night has already been done. So it's like you sort of and I and I actually I had a friend over last night who was um who had had like a tough day and then so he came in and he said um and he started oh man it's just been one of those fucking days you know like and st- and started sort of going into it and I could see it was really like affecting him like he was back in that negative state mm. and he was he was feeling it and it was sort of like the day's over we're yeah. we're now here chilling yeah. having a couple of beers it's all good but there's something in us that wants to go back to that feeling to kind of justify it and kind of say oh you, you rationalize know, it yeah, to, to be in order to move past it yeah mm. yeah so it's it's crazy like um to start to think about the way that the our thoughts work and stuff like that and and how because you can have a totally physiological reaction to an emotion um you know you can start to feel nervous about something like say you're nervous for a swimming race to bring it to the sporting analogy mm. like your palms are sweaty your, your heart's beating faster your skin's all, all tingly and stuff like that you're having a physiological reaction mm. to just simply thoughts in your head Definitely. like an anxious feeling about you know am i going to swim this race mm. and adrenaline this as well like well. thrown yeah. into boot yeah it's crazy man Fucking but crazy. um but yeah i sort of um i feel like it's and i and i remember like a teacher in um in grade uh in grade school like um film and tv um, subjects would say that once you start learning these techniques about how films are made and you know what what lighting and soundtracks and directors and all these different roles and stuff go, like have to do with a movie you'll never watch a movie in the same way again and mm. you sort of and and you can see all the strings being pulled and I feel like when you start to sort of like think about society and civilization in those sort of like okay these are just patterns of behavior that we sort of play a role these aren't actually you know intrinsic natural aspects of our our humanity and if we can find ways to tap into that through meditation or and the thing is like you, you say you've never had like a meditative moment meditating but there's you can have you know any kind of meditation you probably have moments when you're playing golf that are essentially a meditation Mm. for you when you you know that moment of being in flow and being completely in the moment that's valid yeah those sort of things a different form exactly exactly that we that we don't you know necessarily notice but it's when we're completely in the moment with something Mm. that we're not thinking about the future we're not thinking about the past we're just completely in that space i think that the golf is a good sport for that actually too because when you're there you have to be you can turn up and have a uh, a nightmare of a day like uh, uh, well and truly as you'd know now uh, for the listeners danny had uh had his first ever game of golf we've been going to the range maybe four times over the last six months basically just that's his extent of golf and uh went up and played hamilton island which is listed basically top 15 in australia and it's sort of world rated uh, in terms of layout and toughness, so what a fucking baptism of fire! Yeah, absolutely, it was. And and to make matters even uh, worse, we had a game of best ball going between two teams um, that were all there for the for the wedding, and it just so happened that we had four on four Queensland versus New South Wales. So, um, as the first person teeing off for Queensland with New South Wales um, standing behind, it was. Um, Exactly, uh, I was completely not having a meditative moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, inside <laughs> I, your head. I was like nowhere near that space. I was completely inside my head thinking, what are these guys thinking? Yeah. Like, oh, oh shit, yeah, like... Damn, damn, damn. Who, uh, <laughs> you know, who got oh, the win? Where's the ball going to go? Um, New South Wales did. The Blues? Yeah, 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 only by two points or something in the end. Got to win uh, something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to win something, the Blues. But I think we lost a record number of balls. It is, uh, you know, I have absolutely nothing to compare it to, but I would say that it seems like a pretty fucking hard course. Most definitely. From all talking to a couple of the other guys we played who are golfers, it was. Uh, <laughs> you can just tell like they don't rate courses in the top fifteen in Australia if it isn't a legit seventy like, yeah. to be able to play a seventy-two hole tournament on it. So, but to um, even just cruise around the grounds, in, excuse me, in in the buggy. Um, most amazing fucking scenery. Mm. You catch a boat to a separate little island and it's all elevated up above sea level. So you've got 360 degree, degree views of these no. crazy volcanic islands in the middle of the, 
the Pacific. Yeah. It's wild. There were so many islands scattered around. Eh? You can even see that flying into yeah. Hamilton Island. Yeah, I didn't realise how there, much of a, a cluster of mm. islands it was. Yeah. Absolutely it is, man. It's crazy to think it at one time they're all attached. Yeah. Well, there's potential for them to all be attached. Like, um, so yeah. we did have the intention of starting out with UFC, but we've mm. gone on quite a tangent. That's it. Um, but that's all right. Uh, I wanted to give you some rapid fire um, stuff that I've been reading um, over the last sort of day or two that's going on with UFC news and get your opinion. Sure. Um, I guess we'll go um, we'll go from where to go, really. The most recent thing coming up in my UG feed is about um, Bisping saying that it doesn't sound like GSP is going to be ready, so if Nick Diaz wants me to call him out, I'm officially and uh, um, formally saying that I want that fight. So he wants it at um, 2.06. He wants Bisping, to, yeah. you know, right out the Toronto card at the uh, in December. Yeah, he wants Jeez. to be on on Toronto. And Quick I turn around for Mikey B. He's cashing in while he can. Uh, exactly right. Cashing and that's in why while he can. wants a big fight because he said in this statement that um, he doesn't um, he doesn't want to fight just some young upstart. Like mm. he he wants a he wants a money fight. And I think the reason he wants it asap is because he knows that there is some fucking. Savages yeah. that are about to do war at fucking two hundred five. It's de- death rower coming at him. Uh, that oh, we all know one eighty five pounds is so stacked. So good on Bisping, I think, for doing that. Uh, cash him while he can. He's a thirty seven year old guy now, so thirty seven, thirty eight. He's, 38, he, he's so. totally open, saying I'm doing what's best for business. These are business decisions. That's right. And uh, why not ride the wave of Diaz momentum as well? I mean, it's hard to believe looking in that. Little brother Nate has set up the Diaz name while he's been on while Nick Diaz has been on a drug suspension. So Nate was always was always had his own identity, but was always somewhat in Nick's shadow. And now they're both just neck and neck. I feel mm. like they Nate can sell. So good on Nick. Bring him back, and uh, that would just be a stand up war. Both of those guys, we know they can go twenty five hard minutes. And they would sell the absolute fuck out of it as well. Lots of chat. I would uh, would be more than happy if they got that done. And uh, if touch on GSP while we're here, if it's not to be GSP versus Bisping, it doesn't. uh, Either he's going calling a full power play here. George was saying that he he's retired. Like uh, like look, McGregor retired. He said he retired. And remember when he put that tweet up earlier in the year and ended up coming back. So is it a is it a power play similar to that or? Is there two thing, too many things in the way? He's got a six-year contract with Under Armour. Yeah, and, uh, and that's, that's what um, this this report saying that um, his attorney Jim Quinn mm. has said. Who's that, a stud, apparently? Has said that the Reebok deal is is the sticking point, basically. Right. So I think GSP wants to fight in the UFC, but it's just a what were they saying? Something like. Um, you Reebok want to give him five grand, and he had like a multi-million dollar endorsement deal with Under Armour. So wow. it's kind of <laughs> can you imagine that five grand? That's They're it. trying it's to play G spit in the face. It, yeah. it is absolutely. And why? Uh, why wouldn't he play hardball with that? Like, yeah, and he's... and and the the crazy thing is like the report before this I'm reading is about the the new media conglomerate that's bought the UFC and what the actual figures are. So they've released all of the documents so media's gotten hold of them and stuff. And, you know, this you just start to fucking blur out when they're talking about these numbers because it's like, oh, no, no, the deal was originally $3,775,000,000 with a $250 million fucking additional like insurance or something mm. like that. So, oh, no, it's not actually a $4 million deal. It's actually a, a $375 million, like, yeah. You know, $3 billion, like, $375 million deal. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It's not, it's not it's $4 billion. It's numbers, like, man. And, and then it's like, oh, no, 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 fucking GSP gets five grand. Mm. Like, if you have any concept of how much five grand is in relation to a fucking billion dollars, like, it's, it's uh, you got to consider that a spit in the face. And it's George St. Pierre. Like, th- we're talking the greatest, li- uh, greatest welterweight of all time. And he's on the podium of all time greats in my, in my account as well. Look, whether people criticise his style and don't find him the most entertaining, he fucking won. He went out there and won every single time. And to, yeah, as, as Danny's saying, five grand when you've got a multi-million dollar deal with Under Armour as a sponsor. How much are you going to make off like the fight that? if you get yeah. him back or if you play hardball? Like, like obviously, I, I understand it sets a precedence or whatever and he has to be, you know, 
work in with the rules that they've set in this Reebok deal, mm-hmm. but they need to fix the fucking deal quite clearly. Like, not hard. Yeah. Not hard. Reebok and, yeah. are a fucking enormous company as well. Like, what? I just, yeah. It's, that, it's such a gougy thing that it's like you, you're ruining the sport almost. Like, it is. Because pe- people are, uh, are starting to stand up and take notice. Fabrizio Verdum only got in trouble this week for that. If uh, There's a photo he put up on Instagram of him wearing the, uh, the kit, but he had photoshopped a Nike logo on it. As a bit of a slap in the face to Reebok because he's a, he's an MMA veteran and he's a non-champion now, so he would fall back into the what five or ten thousand dollar category because he's not a champion for wearing the Reebok. Kit. But isn't it based on um, the amount the number of the number of fights, fights you have? That you've had. So, but so I think that caps out if you're not a champion at like twenty thousand maybe. <sighs> so that's rough. That's it rough is. as guts, man. It is when you're putting your body on the line like this, and that's where and and, and when you know that. You know, not fucking three or four years ago, you had all mm-hmm. kinds of different sponsors that were giving you incredible, mm-hmm. you know, backing to do what you do and perform for everybody. The thing that would get me as a headline professional MMA guy at the elite UFC level, if I'm out there on Saturday night, you can go to Fox Sports 1 in America and put the UFC on and you're putting, flick the next channel to basketball. It's the same entertainment in the same sort of prime time. These guys next to you are shooting ball at a hoop and getting paid $15 million a year. You know what I mean? And these yeah. guys are coming out yeah. for five thousand dollars and a free T-shirt, yeah, and a fucking <laughs> and forty thousand win, forty thousand, uh, forty thousand show money, forty thousand bonus if you win. If you don't get that, you get your forty grand. Divide that up amongst your team, your manager, your taxes, and you go again. Like, come on, oh, it, it doesn't sit yeah. right with me. And yeah. I'm, I'm oh, I just don't know. And I can, as a fan, being frustrated, I can't imagine what it is. But like being a, a, a fighter who's essentially a private contractor to them. Mm. Do you think there's something different in, you know, obviously the UFC has made great attempts to market itself as a massive sporting sort of corporation like the NFL or the MLB or the, you know, NHL, fill in yeah. the blank. Yep. And um, it seems like maybe there's there's something inherently different about the fight game. You know, you notorious sort of boxing promoters and things like that, like, um, you know, Known for being sort of standover or that sort of heavy-handed style mm. business model, and I don't know. It, it, would that shit? Is it just that it's it's on such a greater scale with the NFL that you wouldn't notice it as much because you know every single individual fighter in the UFC and you know what they what purse yeah. they're getting? Would there be you know low low rostered NFL players that like are essentially you know they're w- getting they're, screwed a bit. Um, the, I think the sort of base contract in the NFL these days would be uh, like a ba- sort of I'm talking out of my ass here, but probably a hundred thousand, one hundred and fifty thousand. I think that would something was similar what, to what Jared Hayne was on there on like a base level contract, which is um that's still a that's still a good wicket. I mean, in terms of. There's only room for growth from there, so you yeah. can if you can get to the high end guy, you can be on your thirty million dollars a year. Yeah, but uh, we're talking about guys like McGregor, who seems to think that he'll have close to a forty million dollar year this year if everything goes well at two hundred five for him. But that's a one out of seven hundred. Mm-hmm. Where in the mm-hmm. NFL, there's thirty or forty of those guys. And so, what do you make of this statement thing that's been floating around for like weeks now? And can you explain it for people a little bit as well? I suppose the Conor McGregor um, scandal yeah, or something oh, rumor, basically. I don't know. There, there seems to be a, a an announcement pending for Conor McGregor post uh, UFC two hundred five. So I think Dana has come along, and I think Dana made a made a statement in the media at some point saying, "Well, look, it wouldn't be fair to to Conor to say anything, but he's got something big going on out, outside at the moment. It's left field." Um, who knows? So whether it is him taking time off, I don't know. People are speculating that his partner's having a child, but... Yeah, or I've heard that, that, that he's that getting takes, married to his partner. Yeah, but. That, that takes... um, It takes nine months to, to cook a child. He, the way how active he is, <laughs> he could have three fights during the pregnancy and take a year off in the first year of childbirth. So I, I shot that one down a bit. I don't think it's anything related to a child. Like, how many fighters have children? Yeah. Fucking heaps of them. Yeah. You just get on with I it I think do most it. likely it probably is him taking time off, mm. saying that... Um, you know, he wants to fucking come back in two years and, and what everybody's saying is if he wins this fight, then that sets him up to be able to come back and sell the mm. absolute roof be off the of fir- Be the yeah. first person to <laughs> come back you and imagine? do Cork, Cork Stadium. Two whatever. years? Because you, know uh, you know he would still work at his game. Imagine mm. if he took two years off, didn't have a fight, just had the odd like smoker in a gym sort of thing where he could just bring someone in to have... Yeah. You'd stay active that way. 
Yeah. Behind closed doors and just come back at like 29 in his like prime. Mm. Oh, can you imagine? Straight savage. Straight at uh, Croke Park there, yeah, Dublin and uh, 80 thou. Yeah. Like, oh, it'd, be, it'd be ridiculous. But for my own selfish reasons, I hope he doesn't walk away. I hope it's, I hope it's yeah. something like... I hope it's a bit of a um, storm in a teacup sort of thing. It isn't. Yeah. The, isn't the biggest announcement, but um, but yeah, they've definitely started a bit of a rumor mill with that one. Mm. So it'll be interesting to see. For sure, is he what gonna, that is, comes out as opposed to two hundred five? Is it Floyd? I don't think they no. would have tied that I, up yet. I oh don't yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, think I don't know. I don't sort of. Um, I guess ingest enough media from Floyd Mayweather's sort of. You know, circle. Mm. I'm not that into into the boxing, the boxing that mm. much. So, other than when there's a big fight on, I might tune tune in for that a bit. That's but right. nowhere near as sort of um, into the UFC. No, we're not sitting down watching Friday night fights on ESPN, watching exactly ten, ten yeah. rounds. Yeah, we're no pu- purely uh, mixed martial arts fans. I can watch. Um, I could sit down and watch a glory card of like glory kickboxing and things like that. I'd be able to sit down and watch a card of that, but. Um, even some of the uh, like sort of low rank boxing cards these days, it it doesn't do a whole lot for me anymore. Not nearly as much as it did, but no, uh, no. I, I think like uh, I I never really associated boxing necessarily with fighting because I think everybody, every you know young male kid mm. grows up with with a certain amount of sort of like boys are always aggressive to each other and mm. that sort of stuff. So uh, your concept of a fight, like y- you have one from from a real sort of hand to hand combat perspective, but Seeing boxing and shit as a kid, it never really um, seemed like it was the same thing to me. It was almost not not in any way like the WWE. It's legit two people punching each other in the head. But I was like, this is a somewhat modified version of a real fight, and mm-hmm. I think MMA gets as close to that as um, you know we can really in a regulated way. Is there? Uh, can you see yourself buying uh, Green Mundine too? I'd I'd, <laughs> I'd consider watching that. Yeah, we'll be watching but it for, somewhere. For let's the, face it, for nostalgia's sake, I That's think right. because I I can remember actually um, watching the first one. Mm. So because uh, yeah, I I remember watching it as well when that happened back in '06. It was yeah. t- ten years ago that, that fight was. And uh, was that '06? Yeah, '06 or '03, one or the other. I think it would have been earlier than that. Yeah, yeah I, I want to say '03. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to get, we'll give that a fact check. But this, this time around, anyway, where. Mm. They've confirmed that that fight is happening now, the rematch. Uh, yeah. It's happening probably – they're both uh, well and truly veteran status now, those guys who yeah. are doing it. This will be their retirement fight, both of them, because they know yeah. it will sell too. As you, It hits on the nostalgia point for all the people that did watch uh, the first one. And I'm th- going to call a spade a spade here, but it's uh, a lot of people will be tuning in to see Chock get put on his ass, and uh, it's going to happen. Yeah. The, uh, it's, it's how someone is – uh, going to what, whatever athletic commission or whatever is going to um, unionise this fight is almost criminal, man. It, it's happening seven and a half kilograms heavier than their first bout when Chock right. had starting to have problems with his chin at like six or seven kilos lighter than the original fight. So really? come, come fight night, they're going up to 83 kegs. Greeny will cut down to that, walk into the, walk into the ring that night, 92, 93 kilo, when Chock will be blown up at 76 Oh, we'll be blown up at 83 if he's lucky. Right, You know what right, I mean? He might weigh in yeah. at 79. It's almost an open weight tournament and Danny Green's coming in to crack. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, uh, not great. <laughs> Je- Jeff, Jeff Fennick, who's an Australian boxing legend, um, came out the week this week when it was announced and he's been vocal about it in the past when people have talked about these two guys getting together for a rematch and he's like, no, 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 it shouldn't happen. This is bullshit. Like, we could... See Anthony get hurt out there. You know yeah, what I mean? It's right. not. It's not fair. Mm. Like, well, who? Why are we making it so <laughs> brutal? Well, speaking you look of at it at that um, point. speaking of retirement, um, I read a a thing from um, a quote from Johnny Hendricks um, coming up to his uh, Neil Magny fight at um, two oh six. Is that one? Two oh seven. That's on the same as the Ronda Rousey comeback. Hendricks card. Magny. Yeah, Hendricks right, Magny's right. on that. Um, but this quote, man, to me, doesn't scream confidence at all. Um, but he says, if I, don't win th- if I don't win this fight, then obviously it's not my fighting skills, it's my willingness to train. That's sort of where my mindset is. I'm back to training hard and working out, but let's say something does happen and I lose. For one, I would be a <laughs> gatekeeper. For, for two, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to fight just the fights. Um, it's a waste to beat yourself up for 12 weeks and go from there. 
then I can also put more time into my kids and all that stuff. And that's really where my head's been. Oh, man, that's not uh, the talk of an ex-world champion no, trying to get no. back to that strap at all. It's my mindset. Yeah, oh, <laughs> man, using the word uh, gatekeeper, lose, uh, if my wife lets me. Like, jeez, yeah. yeah. man, that uh, poster started TRT fucking uh, Johnny Hendrix no, uh, man. is uh, not looking fantastic, allegedly. Neil Magny might go to, uh, go mm. to school in that one. And Magny is so long as well. At 170, he's got... Uh, Almost a John Jones like reach. Only he's over eighty inch reach at one seventy. So mm. if Hendricks wants to use that wrestling, it's like good luck getting to him. Like that's that's going to be the hardest part for him. But if he loses, it's hard to think that he'd walk away. I mean, Johnny Hendricks only somewhat recently when when those trilogies with uh, Robbie Lawler and arguably beat GSP and fuck, he's gone to that headspace now. Yeah, Father Time, man. Yeah, Father Time catches up with everyone, every, every single one. But so I got a few more. Um, Headlines to throw at you. Hit me. Shane Carwin. Bro- signed with Ryzen, man. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Like, he, he's back. Sh- Shane Carwin's a straight beast. Uh, interesting to see after his break how he comes in. Uh, I don't know what person would sign on the dotted line to fight him in an open weight tournament because you know he's cutting to 265. <laughs> they show a fucking <laughs> photo of him, um, like, pound dogging with um, Brock Lesnar. Right. And Brock Lesnar's fist looks like my fist compared to right. like Mark Hunt's or something like that. Oh, no. His fucking hands are the the biggest like baseball mitts you've ever seen in your life. Wow. I know I know where they had to get uh, custom gloves for him for Carwin. Once mm. they put a wrap on him and everything, they're just like the size of a lunchbox. Yeah. But he's uh I think he'll he'll go okay. It'd be interesting to see how far the time's treated him. It's been a couple yeah. of years. He had a lot of fucking problems with his back and neck from memory and uh see if he's taking a bit of time to heal those up he Mm. might be able to come back at the end of the day he's a power guy and that's the thing you lose last like look at dan henderson still hits just as hard as ever so no reason to see why carwin can't come in and do the same yeah and uh speaking of fucking brock and and mark hunt mark hunt's come out now to um potentially take a lawsuit out i don't know whether Mm. against the ufc but i I was reading this article where he says um his last three opponents have all pissed off Mm. it's been mere Brock and Bigfoot, man. Yeah. Like he's had he's Definitely. had three notorious big source heads in in a row. Like it's, you, it's you not can great. understand why he'd be pissed. It's not great. Yeah. I, and I I really I really feel for Mark Hunt. I've gone on record on the on the podcast before and, and talked about how he got well and truly stitched up and, and I completely feel for the guy because he is an an out and out fan favourite. Everyone loves loves Mark Hunt and it he, it is not fair what's happened to him. I just hope he doesn't get dragged out through the courts if he does decide to do it because that shit starts to get expensive after a while too. I've, they uh, listened to Ariel's podcast, the MMA Hour, this this week and they had Randy Couture on because Randy had a contract dispute back in sort of the early days of like, of the UFC uh, in similar to what GSP is going through right now. So they got, he got Randy on to quiz him and during that time where he, he went to the courts to lawyer up against Zufa at that time, like the... Um, organization he spent over 500 grand in legal fees and eventually did get it resolved but he still spent that to to get his justice so i hope hunt's careful because i know he's got a family and he doesn't have that many fights left in his career at that top level he's into his 40s already so if he does it and i hope it works out for him because it is bullshit what happened to him but i hope he doesn't get stitched up through the courts Mm. at the same time Mm. um all right last one to wrap it up uh Fuck, I guess there's probably two things that we can go into right with this, but I'm going to throw the name Anthony Pettis at you. Oh, unbelievable what Got happened to him. Got a fight coming up with fucking Holloway, but it's been a big week for Pettis. It, for, first, the fight announcement against Max Holloway uh, at that 206 card. That's an unbelievable fight, mm, isn't it? At that, 145. Yeah, one full shit. Ooh. Like, Pettis got, got his first win there at 45 against Oliveira, but um, coming in, Max Holloway is a whole different animal. The young Hawaiian... On a tear, he hasn't lost since he fought Conor McGregor, Max yeah, Holloway. Yeah. So he's on like an eight or nine fight win got streak. The rub. It would be hard. Yeah, he did. He got <laughs> got the feel and went went three rounds with McGregor at that time. But uh, he didn't. Uh, McGregor did his ACL in that fight though. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see potential to see that one again one day. Who who knows? But um, that's it. That's a hell of a stand up fight. I don't know who wins that fight to be honest. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. Pett- Pettis. He's a hell of a stand-up guy, and you know Max is going to stand with him too, and that's what the most exciting thing is about it. But I think uh, – then also Pettis this week, 
uh, look, looks out his window at night time and his fucking three cars are in his driveway being set alight. So, like crazy, like a Range Rover and some mm. other luxurious car. There, there's a photo floating around online that was obviously taken by one of the neighbours or him out on his front lawn and they're just like, you know, full on engine mm. fire like crazy. The whole vehicle just set ablaze. So, properly malicious um, act, deliberate, deliberate act of arson. Yeah, that's right. So, who, who knows what sort of shit he's up to, whether it's some. Uh, Disgruntled ex, or who, who knows? You can go to that well forever <laughs> as to speculate yeah. as to what what it was. Or that's fucking, number one on the list. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Cr- <laughs> d- crazy ex, fucking insurance job, fucking. Uh, who knows, man? No, nah, that's no good. That's no good. Definitely, that's definitely you know, that <clears throat> can't be. Uh, that's got to be distracting ahead of one of the biggest fights exactly, of your career. Exactly. Like, we're yeah. talking. To whoever wins this is knocking on the door for a shot at uh, Jose Aldo. Is Jose retired? I don't know what the fucking go is with him, man. He's uh. He, he's, if you interview Aldo at the moment, he'll sound like Johnny Hendricks in that interview, man. Very uh, despondent, de- play- and over yeah, it, yeah, over d- it. downplaying it and uh, not not really showing a whole lot of interest. And had a gutful to mm. use the Australian vernacular. That's right, you de- dead set, mate. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah, he's had a fucking straight gutty, but um, <laughs> anyway, like, see what see what happens with him. But either way, if Pettis or Holloway wins that fight, they get to fight Jose, so. There's fucking still fantastic. A, there's Everybody still a wins. bunch of exciting fights to be mm. made at 145. Definitely. Even, even without Connor in that division, but with Connor in that division, it's um it's a fucking shark tank as That's well. That's right. We'll yeah. we'll uh we'll see very shortly after 205 as to where he's going. Because if he wins at 55, two time two eight world champ, yeah, what does gets he do beaten, then? he doesn't have a belt. Fights Wonder Boy he, for the title after he takes it oh, off. Uh, you imagine <laughs> I, I've speculated that up on Hamo actually. Imagine if he if Connor comes out and cracks him at two oh five, go if Wonder Boy wins that night too, goes, All right, let's go have a stand up fight to yeah. see who wins. Yeah. Three weight world champion. Yeah. Oh Croke Park. <laughs> yeah. That that would set it up then. That Croke would have Park to. against John Jones. Yeah. Like oh yeah, yeah. Mo- moving up against uh, <laughs> to fight Nick Diaz because he takes it off Bisping. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, Could be anything, mate. <laughs> Just fucking Mystic Meg hard yeah, here at yeah, the no, uh, knockoff no. podcast. At least we've got it on record if it happened. We'll look like a fucking. <laughs> we went and got a sports almanac. And Straight shit. sports almanac. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't one of them be good? Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> Stuff dreams are made of. Would oh. you do it? Would I go up in time to. Or would you, um, would you use the would almanac? You change, change the course of history with the almanac? Um, Do you fuck with it after everything we've learned from Back to the Future? No, nah, on on Back to the Future, didn't it just have sports results in it or whatever? So he could yeah, go back. So and he started betting on sports. Yeah, and shit. I would for sure, <laughs> definitely, man. <laughs> doesn't he but, fuck everything up? But subtly though, very subtly, <laughs> he like kills his mum and erases his own life and all this he? sort of oh, shit. Like, mate, worth it for that fucking <laughs> five minutes of satisfaction yeah, of having the, like for fifty thousand on something. one month of Dan Bill's yeah, area. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I wouldn't even get that greedy with it though if I had the almanac. I'd like. Just wager the odd little like Melbourne Cup each year, or yeah, go go yeah. here and be like slippery slope. My if, oh, yeah, greed is good. <laughs> fucking oath. I I wouldn't get carried away. Like hell, uh, I fucking wouldn't. But that seems like a nice moral note to end on. Greed is good. So uh, <laughs> with, <laughs> with that. <laughs> That's we kind of did a bit of a back to front thing today. We normally get mm. sentimental towards the end, but instead we we led led in with that and then got yeah. uh, got stuck into the blood sports at the end. Yeah, just <laughs> fucking straight up did a one on one reverse cowgirl. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Perfect yeah, analogy. Bit of, bit of sa- yeah, bit of Saturday night reverse cowgirl. Thanks for tuning in, peeps. We'll uh, we'll be back. Chris is on deck ne- next week. We've took the hiatus, but we're fucking back on the grind. Uh, Chris will be here next week. We're gonna get deep into some. Uh, Rafael De Sanos versus uh, Tony Ferguson, and we'll talk on some 205 too. So. And I'll see you all in about uh, six weeks when I get back from South America, hopefully uh, with an arsenal of stories for you kids. So uh, Safe travels. Soon, peace.